Medicourt won the Derby, Ragusa won the Derby, the Noblesse, of course, English Oaks by 15 lengths back in what, 1962? Yeah, she was a very good mare. She was a very good She belonged to a fellow called John Olin, who was, uh, I think, was the chairman of the New York Jockey Club. And uh, I think um, the destiny of Judmont comes from Noblesse. I think he bought her off John Olin, early days. And if you look back, Noblesse was part of the stud there. Communication back then, you're dealing with owners in America, not like now, like, was it phone calls, letters? How did you keep them updated on, your horse, on the horse? It was a, what do you call it? <laughs> The ring the bell, sort of what they call it. <laughs> Book a call. And, and, and listen, and so if you answered, you, you could speak. But you were very lucky to get a phone call. It was, and then there was the exchange. Did you know about the exchanges? Mm -hmm. yeah. They had the exchange. Uh, uh, I think Mikko and uh, Jack Doyle had a fella in the exchange in Nace. Mikko too. Yeah, at what do you call it? And they could get cheap calls after 12 o'clock. <laughs> 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 Mick Mick always had an angle. Mick always great. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin Ballymore, am I right saying your father trained him to win a two thousand guineas first time out? He never ran in his life. That was his first one. <laughs> that was some achievement. Yeah, he never ran in his life. He was, I, I think he was out, out of Paddy's sister. She was unbeaten as a two year old, and the funny thing about it, I was in Rossmore at the time and. Um, Dad said to me, she's going to run in, in the Queen Mary. And uh, he said, who do you think? Well, I said, George Moore, I know him from being in Australia. I knew George at the track mm -hmm. when I was with Frank Dalton. So I had give him a ring and what do you call it? And uh, Moore said, I'd be delighted to get her. And uh, I can't tell you what he promised me, but anyway, he's in heaven and I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think Ballymore would win the Guineas? He was fairly, well, it wasn't a big price now. I mean, you know, for our 70s, first run, he should have been 100 to 1, but I don't think he was. And uh, going there, what kind of preparation? How did you tune a horse off to win a Guineas first Well, in those days, uh, uh, he had a place called Clonmanon in Wicklow there. And uh, Chester Beatty owned it, Sir Chester Beatty. He was, uh, I think he was, uh, I think some famous fellow in Dublin robbed all these paintings one time. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a movie about that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We've all seen it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he had the, uh, beautiful gallops there, right across this, uh, on top of the sea, you know, or on top of the, the coast. Mm. Uh, there was seven furlongs in a mile, mile and a quarter. Beautiful. So this is alongside Rusborough House, obviously? Yeah. Ah. And uh, we used to, when the horses broke up there, we could bring them to Port Marnock. Had boxes in Port Marnock, and uh, always if there was frost there, we could bring them there, stable them in Port Marnock, and walk them along the beach. And leave them there for a week or something, oh, yeah, maybe. Leave them there for a month, six weeks. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Same in Clonmanon. You went to Australia at 18 years of age. You you were educated at Newbridge College in Rockwell. Am I right saying that? I went to Newbridge first. Got it. Uh, junior medal ran up in the cup. And I got a senior medal in in Rockwell. In rugby. Yeah. Yeah. You were a big. You were a very good rugby player. Well, I was. I played. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see him coming at me with rugby. Well, I'd just drop it. Go, there you go, Kevin. I'm out here. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> I played. <laughs> I wasn't putting the iron, delivering the oranges at half time. I was playing. <laughs> How good were you at school? Did you shoot into your lessons? Poorly. Poorly. Poorly, poorly, poorly. And that time you couldn't pass your leaving unless you had Irish. You had to go, you, you, you could get all the subjects in the world, but if you didn't pass Irish, they wouldn't give you the leaving, sir. Really? Oh, yeah. And you had to do the matriculation uh, to get your leaving then after that. So. That? I, it was another exam the following year, so I just thought that the shortest way home was Australia. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to Randwick, Frank Dalton. Yeah. How long did it take you to get to Australia in those days? 
Well, I think it was about uh, a day to get from um, Heathrow to about eight hours, ten hours to get to Singapore, mm. and then another ten hours on. Okay. About twenty-four to twenty-five hours. Similar to what Nearly today. Similar, similar today. Yeah. You know. but, um, but when I was coming back, it was on the Martin Bay, and it took six weeks. There were strikes everywhere. In 1954, the what he got, on was in everywhere. Five years in Australia, am I right saying that, with Frank Dalton? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you went there, was it to get ed an education as a trainer, or were you going there to live for a while? I went there, I went there what he got, as a job, working for Frank Dalton from the bottom. And uh, I was there about 12 months, and I was the foreman in it. And we had a very, very good time for four, four years when I was there. He was my age nearly when I got there. He was an old man, but a nice man, gentleman. Was he, how influential was Frank Dalton on your career? Ah, uh, he was very good. He was a very, very nice man and in what he, but he was full of detail. Everything was done t to the last. And he only had ever 25, 30 horses, no more. He, his brother was a priest and he was very, what do you call it? You have to do this and you have to do that. <laughs> you know, he wasn't a, I wouldn't say, as they say in the stand, he wasn't a larrikin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did go from the Corra wide open place, was Australia like it is now, training on the tracks? All and, training on the yeah. track then. We had to walk to the track in the morning. Uh, what do you, we used to have to pull out four. And before the tracky, traffic came and we get down. And what do you, we had to go the main road really. The, what do you got? The, the traffic would be just getting warm. We worked then from four o'clock to nine, mm -hmm. then closed up, went back at two, and uh, you rode them back to the track for an hour walking. Then you come back and head up and fed up at seven o'clock, and the rest of your day was your own. <laughs> Do you ever think about training in Australia? I had a license for about six or eight months. Oh, did you? In yeah. Australia, right. Yeah. and. Uh, Jack Thompson were riding a horse called Holbrook. We brought him to a place called Musselbrook. And anyway, we had a fellow, Dr. Gates, and a couple of, a couple of fellas, what are you going to do? All got stuck into him, and he got beat ahead. I came back, and all the tack was gone, and what you, the rugs <laughs> off the horses. So I said, I'm off. It's all right. <laughs> That was Australia. That's it, that was it, that was it, that was it. <laughs> it was probably a blessing in disguise. Well, I don't know, it probably was. I, I actually was had a job got in Japan of the Japanese government at the time. My old boss got it, he was very friendly with this fellow who's an Australian agent in, what do you got? And I had the job and I said I'd come home first, see what it was like. And anyway, I'm here still. And there was a chance of you going to so going train to Japan. In Japan. Japan was only starting then. Okay. Yeah. What they wanted European horsemen or people That's with it, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've come back here to Ireland to assist your dad Darkey. That's it, yeah. You rode a lot of winners as an amateur. I rode a good few, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know how many, but a few. And being an amateur in them days, obviously bumpers every day, the am big amateur races. They were big in betting, betting races on the meeting on the day, the, the bumpers. And what do you got? They had, Bunny Cox used to ride most of the favourites in those days, riding for Dan Moore, and he rode for everybody. And uh, I rode quite a few winners for uh, Lord Fingal. And uh, I remember I was riding a horse for him at the park one day. He was called Jem Mason. He called him after a friend of his. I think Jim Mason won the English National on that, on, oh, I can't think of the name of the horse anyway, but Jim Mason, he named the horse after him and I wrote, or had been riding work for Danny Morgan. And uh, <coughs> anyway, Danny Morgan says to me, is this horse any good? I said, I think he's a very good horse. He says, well, I have him in at the park and you ride him. That's Grant, so I rode him, went to the park anyway. and. Uh, into the ring anyway, and Lord Finn got a lovely man, comes over and said to me, Kevin, he says, uh, I've sponsored a flat race, the first flat race that ever will ever be run in Fairy House, and it's for maidens only. 
finished fifth. And I remember Mr. Bolger coming and said, he grabbed me. He says, I have you this time. He <laughs> <laughs> and I just said, would you have a look who the senior steward is today? And he looked and he, he saw that he owned Jim Mason, the horse that I was after riding. <laughs> <laughs> you were okay. <laughs> so, needless to say, he went to Fairy House and he won accordingly. Yeah. You can record that mm. because it's there in black and white. And I beat my good friend, Bunny Cox, on a very good mare called Four Aces. Nice. And unfortunately, the horse got badly hurt schooling about a month later in Danny Morgan's. And Ferris never flat racing on from Denham's Banks did Irish Grand National. I rode, I rode a hurdle race for Paddy Mullins one day, a mare called Fort Lass, who was the dam of Fort Tria. And Mullins asked me to ride her. And uh, anyway, she finished third anyway. And there was a picture of her jumping the last hurdle. And father sees it, of course. His brother was killed in Punchestown. He was 18, Kevin, in the point to point of a mare called Blackwood Cross for a fella called Joe Marr. Joe Marr was Bapti's brother, and Bapti was married to Kevin Barry's sister. Right. And Kevin Barry of the famous Kevin Barry. That's it, ah. that's it. And uh, he just said to me, if you ever do that again, he said, you won't be around here. <laughs> <laughs> you get the sack. <laughs> that was, that's a true story. So you learned your lesson that day? Yeah, <laughs> but then against that, he didn't mind when he, he wanted one schooled, he didn't mind putting me on to school one. <laughs> <laughs> How rough and ready was riding back then, or was it like a survival of the fittest, tough tracks? Well, I remember, I remember being in the maze one day, and a lovely man called Major Scott. They said, now, the fanciest ones in front and the ones that are not fancied out the back, there was fun. 41 <laughs> There was no no restriction on the many rollers. Really? Not yeah. at all. No. But there wasn't as many uh, trainers at the, in those days. And so a big field was what he got unusual, you know. Yeah. Jockey wise, uh, good amateurs rode. You mentioned Bunny Cox. He was um, uh, for the Francis Flood. And mm. Lillington probably was as good as ever anybody. Alan, Alan Lillington. Lillington. He was a very good rider. Really? Yeah. He rode uh, winning fair to win the. Uh, the champion hurdle, but for a big man, uh, he was very set, very very close to. He mm. breast was on the pommel of the saddle. Really, yeah. And of course, winning fair was trained by Jamie Spencer's dad. Yeah, trained by Jamie Spencer's dad. Yeah. One eyed. Really. Yeah, one eyed. Dermot Wells, you'd have ridden with Dermot Wells as well. Yeah, he was very good rider. Very, very good, brilliant, very good rider. Very good ride. Wouldn't you like to try to get up Kevin Prendergast in a friend, would you? Any, any run-ins with Dermot? I rode with uh, uh, Ted. Ted? Ted, yeah. Ted got a race off me in Leperstown one day. <laughs> Being him, I just give him a bit of a squeeze on the home turn. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Mr O'Toole was second. He was riding for O'Toole. So, anyway. Kieran? Uh, uh, no, Mick. Mick. Oh, sorry, Mick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, no, Mick went in shouting and roaring and what they got. And of course, uh, his daughter, the, one of the senior stewards' daughter, was riding out in Wells at the time. So, <laughs> case around, that was it. <laughs> did, you, did you enjoy the riding side of it? I did. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.